This video is structured different to my usual videos. Should you want to see the machine on the right hand side finish the final parts of the twist of the story and how it works, then go to this point here. If you want to be subject to my ramblings, paths that I follow, things that went wrong, burnt out motors, then continue to watch. I should just explain that the machine on the left mysteriously changes to the machine on the right without much explanation halfway through the video. The reason for this is I simply forgot to record the reason. But I obtained the machine on the left hand side from the tip, a guy was simply chucking it in when I was skip diving. I asked him for it, he gave it me in his box, I assembled it, I was looking on the internet for the correct colours, possible stickers that this item may have had. While looking on the internet, I found the machine on the right in a slightly worse state than that and I thought I've got to have it. So I won it on eBay, brought it home and that's really how I obtained the machine on the right hand side. So the machine on the left is a lightweight fabrication machine with a cast wheel and a cast hand wheel that you see on the upper side. Um, I suppose really you could argue when the company was on its way out. Um, the machine on the right was a much better quality machine, much heavier machine, loads and loads of casts, more up my street, so we say. The one on the left is called the Gen, Hobbies Gem uh, Fretzel, and the one on the right is the Hobbies A1 Fretzel. Come and have a look what I got you. That's cool, wow. Can I have a go? You can have a go. Thank you. Where's the switch? What do you mean switch? The switch that powers it. It's not, you have to use the pedals. Pedals? Yeah, it's called a treadle saw. So as the chap at the tip uh, refuge site uh, said to me, it is all there, but um, you know, there's a split pin missing out of that and the washer goes up there. There's no blade in this at the moment and the spring's not collected, but uh, we get a general gist. There's a lot of distortion on the arms. The arm's bent here. Um, the, the table's worn where the blade's been used off center. This arm's like a banana if you look at it across there, but it's all there. It's, it's gonna be a fun little project. There's a twist to this project. We can do this up. We can straighten everything. We can paint it. It's not really a video, is it? There's no machining to do. There's no... I don't see there's any purpose, and I haven't got a purpose for this machine, so all I'd do is put it on eBay, and I can't part with it. I can't part with a beautiful cast wheel like that. Um, so we're going to motorise it. Okay. Now, shock horror, look, I'm a purist too. You've, uh, for those of you who follow the channel and you, you've seen the Honda Chally video, it all had to be genuine parts nothing else would do I'd even buy second hand to be genuine but for me I really have no use for this item um, long story short is we went to the maker convention in 2018 so yeah we went to the Axminster stand they had uh, a series of uh, scroll saws on display and uh, one of my children absolutely loved it uh, really come to light with it straight on it now she's she's only nine now she's never going to play with the treadle on this it she's never ever going to use it she's going to get bored it's not for her um it's a sign of the times it's sad and i pity it like anybody else and it's a shame but that's just the way it is um so we're going to motorize it we're going to do it as tastefully as we can we're going to hide as much as we can uh but we're going to give this a purpose, a new purpose. Uh, we're going to do it in a way that doesn't modify the original machine. So think of it like the Singer sewing machine attachments that you used to get. Like I've got a Singer with treadle base, uh, which is disconnected like this wheel, because I've bought the Singer motor for it, the genuine, not the Chinese one I hasten to add, uh, the genuine Singer one because it's easier because it makes it more usable and that's what i want to do with this not affect the machine can be turned back we need to keep all this we need to drive it by the belt we can put a motor on there we can drive it straight to that we've lost this we've lost the meaning of this we've lost why we need to do this project so we're going to drive this wheel yes we're going to disconnect the link rod 
link wood, whatever you want to get. Beautiful wood, excellent. Um, we're going to disconnect it and we're going to drive it off here somehow. We've got a number of ideas. We've been looking in China and we've got some motors come in and bits and pieces. I'm trying to keep it as cheaply as possible as everything I do. But we need to do a tasteful modernisation of this. So here we go. This is where we're getting the inspiration from. This is my Singer Treadle sewing machine. Had it about a year now, a little project for the future. Wanted one for some time. I think of it as the, the welder of cloth. Uh, minor repairs need to be done to the varnish. But we digress. So where have we got the ideas from? Um, I bought the machine as a treadle without any intention of ever using the treadle. Um, and I also bought uh, these motors. These are all the genuine Singer motors, foot switch and light. And this was simply a bolt-on attachment that Singer did for their sewing machines, really to give them longevity um, and make it easier for the user. There was also a little handle. Um, I've got many, many accessories with this, many, many feet for it. Um, I am proficient on sewing machines, but I just wanted a bit of English history and the... Uh, the paintwork is absolutely stunning on this machine. It's a good example. So, this attachment bolts onto this machine without any modifications to the machine itself. And this is really the route we need to go down with our saw. It's just not going to work. You've got so little clearance between that area there, just in there, that it's got to be such a thin belt. I mean, it'd be nice to have a little side on the belt, such as like this, but there's so little room. Yes, we could extend this out further. Might even get a tiny little thin bit of packer in there, but it's still not going to be enough. We could change this bolt and move it right over, but then we're altering the original design. We are not going to alter the original design. This is going to be a bolt-on. So yeah, it was worth a try. I was quite happy with that as well, it was quite round. Okay, so on to the next. Got a little idea. For those of you who followed my channel, the Chally build, um, I've got these left over, which is, there's the other bit. Where is the other bit? I've got this left over, which is the, the timing chain out of the um, CF70 that I did. We're going to put either that one on there. Well, I don't think that will go. But we'll try and put that one on there. And then the larger one uh, on a motor. So we're going to order a motor, leave this for now and wait for the motor to come from China. So the motor's come, it's, uh, it's quite a nice heavy motor actually, uh, it's meant to be brushless. Yeah, so it's a uh, DC 12 volt, which means we've got a variable speed. There's a number of issues we've got here. That is actually running it at 12 volts, which isn't really enough. 
um, if we exceed the rating of the motor and put it at that's 14 volts it's starting to get quite warm we're pulling in 4.5 amps and I can feel the heat rising in the motor we stop it and then try and start again it hasn't got much start up to also what's to be noted I have to watch my fingers now if I take away the power i.e. turn it off it all pulls up because of the type of gearbox it is I'd imagine it's a, a worm wheel in there um, and obviously it won't drive back through and turn the motor so it's a sudden stop well these kind of sudden stops is just going to put too much load on this assembly here and end up screwing this gearbox up um, that's a shame I was hoping for a, a, a nice hidden option because it was my intention to put the motor up here hidden away so you couldn't see it uh, so we've got to rethink this again I'm going down the route same machine motor I bought this from China so let's have a little gun it was 14 some, some odd quid so we seem to have um, a universal belt for a same machine got some spare brushes some brushes floating around in there uh, some brush caps and some obviously some fixing bolts to the machine. That's quite good. There's the motor. Um, got no earth. We'll have to check that out. And it's uh, it's grub screwed pulley on. So hopefully we can. Hopefully they're the same size shafts, that would be really nice. Foot pedal with a whopping right big dent in it. And uh, some solder falling out of it. Knock that little dent out, and I think we'll re rewire this. Um, so this seems some sort of heat sink stroke uh, resistor uh, for your variable speed control. Um, they look a bit misaligned as well. Not sure what's going on there. So we're going to have to undo these, realign that, and definitely put an earth on it. So what actually touches that? Oh man, that that goes straight onto that. And then it seems to be the harder you press, the more prongs it touches, and uh, must alter the resistance in that way. And this just dissipates the heat. So in the end, you end up joining. It looks like it's going to be an off. One, two, three speed. Yeah, three speed. By just simply engaging more of these, and the circuit becomes shorter. So it goes through less of a resistance in there, I presume. Anyway, we need to repair this. We're going to wire it up with an earth, and then we're going to give it a go. I'm not going to do that again. You see the smoke coming out of the back of that. Um. All right. What's next?
so we're going to go down the route of um, this now. Um, I bought this off a, a chap on eBay, uh, and it's treadmill or uh, vibrating exercise equipment spares. Um, it's listed as new other, and uh, it's quite a good package, really. I think this cost me forty-four pounds around there um, and it was sent next day via UPS so that was nice um, as you can see this is appears new um, comes with the the full board uh, with all its program modes on it as it would have been if it was to go inside the machine um, um, but yeah you get the remote the program uh, 220 to uh, 220 AC to 220 DC, yes, 220 DC, I didn't believe it either, and contacted him lots of times, and sure enough, it is uh, indeed a, a 220 um, DC motor. Um, 200 watts. So we're gonna go down this route now, we're gonna alter the uh, pulley off um, the same machine motor and the uh, 12 volt gearbox motor, alter it, bore it out to fit this um, hopefully this will have enough oomph to make it work I think we're gonna have more trouble hiding this uh, so it may be on show a little bit more but we'll do our best to hide it this motor is impressive very impressive so far um, quickly turning it on this is from zero I mean, admittedly, that's no load, but so that's on the slow speed, and that's flat out. That is a very, very, very quiet motor. I can feel very little vibration. And I've got to say, at the moment, that is very good value for money. We can see they aren't bushes, they are actually bearings in there. Yeah, very little vibration as well. That is very good. This is the uh, DC version, DC output version of the controller I had with the sewing machine motor. That one was obviously AC. Um, there are, I, only got, I got this for £15. You have to wait your 30 days, but it's very good. Um, little on off switch so I've uh, loosely connected all this up now um, got this G clamped in we're going to see if this uh, motor has the oomph um, we've upgraded from a CF70 Chally chain to uh, a genuine Honda CB125 chain um, a bit of a longer chain it's actually brand new, a uh, bit of a longer chain because I'm having trouble thinking where I can put this motor. I mean, we can tuck it right in here, under here, but the trouble being is that um, it won't be in line with the sprockets uh, and we're going to hit this steel work. Uh, I really don't want to put it down here, but at the moment I can't see all, an alternative to that. Um, but it is going to spoil the look that I wanted. so. Uh, we're going to have to have a think about this whether we have it slightly like that and put some cover over here I don't know yet but um, let's just see how this rolls I should say that this is actually running the top arm on the saw. Uh, I'll cut to that in a minute, but I've actually put a blade in and we are running the saw. The arms are very, very bent. Uh, it looks like this has been dropped in the past at some time. It is, uh, yeah, rather misshapen. That is running very, very nice. The motor is barely turning over on the um, Chinese speed controller, so 
take it with a pinch of salt. It's saying we're putting in 20% of the possible power, the possible uh, 220 DC. Um, and that is running an absolute treat. So what we need to do now is make some bracketry uh, to clamp around the motor to hold it uh, wherever we choose to put it out the way with a tensioner on it for the chain. We may have to get some split links for the chain uh, to put it at the correct length that we need. Uh, but at the moment, at least we're looking for no more motors. That is, that is a brilliant success there. Very impressed with that. So we've had success with uh, the 220 DC motor, um, more than success actually, it's been very very good. So we're, we're going to chuck this, um, I've got, uh, we're going we're to keep the motor, um, I've stripped all the uh, connections off it and we'll keep the 12 volt DC motor. Um, I've got no faith in this. I don't like it, it's cheap, it's tacky, um, it comes apart like that and you're left with springs falling out and live terminals. Um, so yeah, this is just simply going to go in the bin, I've got no use for this at all. What I did find out while I was looking for new chain is that the cheap Chinese pit bikes, mini bikes, use uh, a 25H chain, uh, not as a timing chain, but as a drive chain. Um, this is a sprocket, a, a 78 tooth sprocket off a uh, rear wheel of one of those bikes, £3.75 posted to your door, bargain. Um, we do need to make a bush for that so it goes onto the spindle like the old one. Um, I was originally hoping for, it was meant to have come with more spokes and then I could have tailored it to hide behind the cast ones but so be it, we'll work that out later. Um, we may trim these ones or, or, or wherever. Um, so where are we going? Uh, yes, why have I increased the size of the sprocket? Two reasons why I've increased the size of the sprocket is uh, you may remember when we were crudely holding it and trying it, we could only get to about 20% and that was ample speed for this saw. Anything more is destructive and offensive to it. Um, so what I've done is uh, two reasons. One, uh, increasing the size of the sprocket, obviously the motor will have to spin faster. Uh, I don't think um, power was an issue, it already had plenty of power, so increasing this sprocket wasn't for the reason of power. It was to use more of the range of this controller uh, giving us more control over more of a range rather than just a tiny little bit of adjustment down here so we'd hopefully come a bit more round on the dial. So it's all been welded on at the rear now and this will sit on there. We crudely bolted it up. This idea gives us far too much run out of the large sprocket. So now that idea has got no legs, we need to move on. We have another sprocket. What I intend to do now is make a carrier that will fit onto that bore there and that will mount the sprocket. I started to make the um, carrier for the uh, sprocket. Um, I bored that out, I didn't drill it out because the wall is so thin here. Um, and this will, that's the ID of that is obviously the OD of the um, cast wheel. And then that will just clean the paint up on the inside of there. 
is a nice uh, snug fit on there. And that presses into there like that. The carrier now has uh, three uh, M5 um, tapping drill holes in it, and uh, again for a grub screw here for a five mil thread, and that will go onto the the hub of the um, the cast wheel. Um, with this, this is the other side. Of the carrier which will sandwich the sprocket as such but also spaces us away um, so we can get the chain uh, in between the framework of the saw and the cast uh, wheel the cast pulley wheel so all I've simply done is uh, this is 10 mil thick um, made this and uh, pressed in some phosphor bronze reamed it out pressed in some phosphor bronze um, we're now going to uh, drill this and ream this to the diameter of the uh, caster pulley. I uh, did this to give it some support um, because I thought that the the motor is going to do a lot more pull on the uh, existing uh, spindle than would be through a pedal and it would be more constant. So this was simply to give support to the um, the shaft really and stop the wheel wearing out. Okay we now have a working prototype and it certainly is a prototype. We've got G clamps holding things together, we've got really dodgy electrics going across the bench with other projects. Um, we've got a lot of run out, um, got jubilee clips and bands holding all that together. Uh, onto the machine itself, we do have a lot of run out here on the uh, guide roller underneath. The arms are all over the place there. Um, not showing too clear, but the whole machine is leaning over here, yet the table is straight. So if you see this line here, and then look at that line there, the whole machine's out, including the pulley down the bottom. If you look along this axis here, to that axis there, it's out like that. Now at the moment I can't see any reason for that because it's bolted down here and it's bolted down there and it's all lying flush so it must be like a casting thing, it must be here from day one. I'm going to try and correct that but being respectful to the, the item itself and its idiosyncrasies. Um, Along with the pulley down the bottom here, that is actually pitched compared to even the leg. But that, that would have been machined like that from day one. There is no play in that, which we will come to on the uh, final pieces. So other than levelling, we're going to get rid of all the prototype bits, get rid of the G, G, G clamps, make a proper bracket that's also tasteful and in line. We need it we need it that cast industrial type look um, as I've tried to make the brackets all over engineered and then we need to make this controller somewhere um, I'd love a more authentic brass finished controller um, I don't know if I've got time for that and I'm a bit dubious about bringing brass to the front electric and conductivity and all that this may have to stay as is for now or if I can find another one um, but we're going to mount that somewhere around here and maybe some covers over here but there you go there is the working prototype I will go into more detail in a sec uh, when I've made the finished parts I'm going to paint it we're going to sand all this woodwork here, across the top here, get rid of the play in this here, and then do the final build with the final machine components. But so far this is a right result. So we've made the basic cowl. Um, just tack three pieces together for now, because we'll probably need to modify it as we go. 
put the hole out in the front for the speed control. Um, we're going to enclose the rear, possibly the side, maybe the underneath, just so little hands can't go wandering around here. And also we need some sort of plate to hold the gland for the wire strain in case it gets pulled we don't want to start pulling these terminals out here. We need to include an earth point and also an earth point on the machine as well because I don't want it to just be physical contact that keeps it. What we're going to do now after we've enclosed that is work out some bracketry to mount it to the machine. Now with this on the machine as you see here this goes up and down to give you your chain tension um, you only need about 10 mils worth of travel to go from very slack to very tight and um, we're trying to stay on the lines of a universal fit for the machine so we need to make it adaptable between the frames rather than specific to this one um, so what we're going to do is some sort of mounting bracket we're going to have to slot it to allow that to travel up and down for the chain tension. Now we haven't got a lot of room in here now. We've got about five, ten mil under there. When this is enclosed it'll be even less. We need to think how we're going to bring the brackets across here. We are going to put a back on it here because there's a lot going on in here, a lot of electrics. I want this all open and as it should be. Um, this this is a modification, it's unsightly, it's modern, it's electrics. I want to try and hide this. Um, and also, also, like I said before, for the safety aspect of it. So we're going to move on now with the back and the brackets. Following what we need to do at the rear and the mounting of the brackets, I'm then going to continue this profile here, along here of this table. I'm um, going to put a piece of flat stock in here and then we're going to try and get this radius here. I'm going to use some round bar, weld that to the flat stock and then just sand the flat on it. Try and get this all the way along to make it look like it's one piece all the way around here for an additional tray for, well just for the look of it really and I don't know, spanners for the blade or spare blades or what have you. But that's going to go on here might make a little rubber mat in the end, I don't, I don't know. Um, but that's going to be how we're going to follow the top round. So the little cowl is now finished. Um, I've tried to follow the profile on along here. I've also tried to copy the irregularities of the profile. Um, taking really different parts of this and tried to transfer it to here and I've done this via um, different belt sanders I have three different belt sanders with different radius wheels so I've gone along with a certain section then screwed it up really um, with another belt sander I've used die grinders uh, and also hand files um, to give it the same sort of inconsistency that this has. Um, at one point it was looking a bit too uh, perfect so I've purposely scuffed it, taken chunks out of here. Um, this I might do a little bit more, this is too neat along here and it doesn't quite match the back here, how this is tapered, how it isn't level. I might do a bit more work on this one. Um, that's now got its own little separate tray that we might put a little rubber mat in there. And then onto the rear, you can see that the profile follows along. None of it is actually uh, fixed, should I say. Everything comes apart here. Um, nothing uh, is welded. This is to still totally a separate item. This is um, a little plate that I've welded in. 
and this um, this is absolutely filthy. This needs a clean. Um, that fits in there now and hides the rear terminals, so no little fingers can go wandering around here. We've drilled a hole for a 20 mil gland for the power cable. We've got two uh, uh, nut rivets here, um, which have this plate with I've profiled. Got this plate out with a little kick at the rear, and now you go on there. Um, you'll see this when it's assembled in a minute. They go on there, and that clamps to this here to hold it here. Clamp, no alterations to the saw, and the rear bolts that you see fit onto here and here. This also helps to keep it level. The holes in the rear are a lot bigger than clearance for 5mm. The reason being for that is uh, to allow that bracket to go up and down as you please for chain tension while this still is flush with the top of the saw. So this is now off to the power decoders, that part, that part, and the bracket here. Um, I wanted the powder coat look. The, for those of you who watched the Chally video, you'll see that um, uh, a colour was used called Retro Black, which is like an aged black finish. It's not satin, it's not matte, it's not gloss. It's like an old fashioned black colour. We started to dissemble the saw now. We are not going down a restoration of this item. It's perfect as it is. I want the patina of the years of use this saw was used a lot um, the story of the saw was I bought it from eBay off the son of a father who had deceased and uh, kept it for many many years and when I went to pick it I drove quite a long way for this saw actually when I went up to pick it the guy was just showing me around his father his deceased father's garage on all the things that were made on this fishing creels, little things for them when he was a young child. Um, I, this is not a show and shine video. This is not a paint and call it a restoration. This video is about bringing it to the 21st century without affecting the beauty of what this stood for uh, back in the day and to really get a millennial to appreciate how things were and to spend more than two seconds on it. I think it's important we just leave it as it is. This is the paintwork that this guy did according to the sun some 40 years ago and there's nothing wrong with it. It's marked but it's a working saw. I'm not going to put this on display. This is going to be used. So other than renewing these arms. These arms are shot. They have a permanent bow in them. I don't believe them to be the original arms. It's actually um, a piece of rectangle section of wood that's been chopped diagonally at an angle. That's actually a right angle and that's a right angle at this end. None of the holes are along the centre line of each arm and that has been cut at an angle across. So that is actually a right angled triangle, two right angled triangles there. Um, when we make our new ones, we're going to make them that there's an angle on each side, like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe these to be the original arms. We've got a, a plate here that was on one of the arms. This is where like the coach screw went through. This has clearly been chopped up and adapted. I really don't know what to do about this because on the machines I've been looking at on the internet, this plate doesn't exist. That hole's off center. It's just a bit of a mess, all this. I, I don't think it's the original item. And I would appreciate if somebody's got one of these saws. Do you know what this is? Is this the original item? At the moment, I'm going to leave this off. I don't know where this has come from. And I can't really see why it was on other than the really worn holes on the back here it covered those and give it some strength so I'm not sure whether this was just a, a make do fix but I find it mm, I don't want to put that back on never say never but until somebody says otherwise it just looks a bit hacked up
all we're simply going to do is clean these components. I'm going to keep the patina of that. It still has in place its original zinc plating. So I'm just going to gently wire wool it without removing the plating and put a bit of oil on it. If we clean these items and polish them too much, we lose beautiful markings such as these. This is how far I'm going to go with it. All I've done here is clean this with a bit of grease remover and a very light go over with some wire wool. That's it, that's finished. That's how I want it. Still got some of its original plating on it. This is the crank arm, Conrod, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's worn got a lot of ovality in the bores, it's very sloppy I don't believe it to be the original one so we're going to make uh, a new one of these, we've got some American white oak left over from some skirting that I did in my home so we can take it out of that And here we go. The new arm. The overall sizes across there are the same as that, well near enough. And at the front, length the same. But instead there's the same taper on each side rather than just on a single side. I'm a bit dubious about transferring the holes across from there to there until uh, I get the machine back in one piece and we can measure where it is because they're such poorly drilled holes it might make the blade out at the end so we're just going to finish these arms off I'm just going to put a nice little edge down the one side just take the sharp enough break break the corner and um, and we'll move on from there little uh, foot switch because um, basically one of my kids is using it want to make it as safe as possible and simply treating this as a dead man's it's not a variable speed switch it's just simply a dead man switch and to stop them having to bend down to turn off the controls or on the controls they can simply set the speed they want hit the foot pedal and off they go so this has come from Amazon uh, it's a die cast construction it's actually very very good um, mechanically anyway very very good I'm a little bit concerned that we only have the three wires here um, a black which I presume would be a common a normally open and a normally closed I can't see an earth wire so I'm going to find out which one is the normally open and leave that one alone the normally closed um, we're going to turn into an earth wire and earth this case in. It, it might have one, but looking at that, there ain't no earth on that. So we're going to have a little look inside first. It's actually quite nice construction inside. Uh, it's a good quality switch that they've used. There's um, some shield in there. A little, little bit of insulation. So yeah, that, that's that's nice. But with, there is no earth, so we're going to um, find out which one's which of these two. Cut it and turn it into an earth, because we don't need the normally open and the normally closed. So I believe that one to be the common there. I would have thought. So we'll pick on these two.
just been a bit of a dumbass. Um, I've just picked up this speed control and I noticed it's actually got a stop switch, little safety circuit in here. So how we've just wired that up, which is normally open, when you press it, it would actually make that contact across there and shut it down. So when there's a connection across those two, there, it stops this working. So the normally open that we've just wired in there, we got to change to a normally closed. So when this is pressed, it breaks it, so nothing is across those, and then this will operate. So simply we've just got to solder the one wire onto the other now quickly. I present to you the Tinker Mod Motor Mod. You will get a UK three pin plug and lead, a high performance drive chain, a sprocket with running hub, mounting brackets, cowling, foot pedal switch, speed control, motor, and framework which supports all of this. Now you may think this is a cut down computer lead a Honda CB125 timing chain, a rear sprocket of a Mini Moto, leftover bench material and a cheap Chinese speed controller. Oh, you'd be wrong. It's the Tinkerbod Motor Mod.
may like look at that. Thank you for your support and some lovely comments that come through. I don't do Patreon, I don't ask for anything. Just a thumbs up and a subscription is always appreciated. It puts me up in the ratings and it gives me a little bit more income. What I invest in a project far, far outweighs anything I ever get off YouTube. I appreciate that I've just crossed over 2,500 subscribers. I don't publish videos a lot, but when I do, I'd like to think that some effort's gone into them. So thanks guys, it's really appreciated. Big shout out to Ted Vegas, he's got a very small channel at the moment. He has got some bikes that I hope to see on them, some nice challenges that he's doing up. You know you need to get them on YouTube, Ted. So, Ted Vegas, thank you very much. And for those who have started to follow me, I've recently put myself on Instagram. There's a couple of guys who are there who always give me likes and supports. Just a few people on Instagram at the moment, but I do appreciate it. I have a couple of videos coming in the pipeline. Hope to re release those within the next month. Um, thank you guys.